This video is about ATP, a molecule that we encounter frequently on our course, particularly in respiration and photosynthesis. ATP is called adenosine triphosphate, and it's important that you know the full name. And when asked what it's used for, or what it does, it's an immediate source of energy for all cellular activities. And the word immediate there is really important because it tells you a little bit about how ATP functions. So ATP is this molecule that is broken apart to release energy, and that energy is used to do work within the cells, and then it's quickly regenerated or remade because a constant supply is needed by the cells. So when ATP is broken down, energy is released, and this energy is used by the cell to do specific work. For example, it could be mechanical work, such as muscle contraction by muscle cells. It could be transport, as in active transport, where substances are transported across membranes, or indeed chemical reactions within the cell. So those anabolic reactions, those building reactions that happen in cells that require the input of energy. All of this is fueled by the energy released through the breakdown of ATP. To understand how ATP supplies the energy for all these cellular activities, it's important to know something of its structure. So ATP, or adenosine triphosphate, is made up of this nitrogen-containing base, adenine, a 5-carbon sugar, ribose, and these three phosphate groups. So when we consider how ATP is broken down to release energy, we focus on the terminal or the last phosphate and the chemical bond that attaches it. So this is sometimes considered a high energy bond, but it's better to consider it as an unstable bond, a bond that's easily broken by the addition of water. So when water is added to ATP, that bond is broken, releasing that last phosphate and also resulting in the release of energy. That energy is used immediately by the cell for other reactions that require the input of energy. So very simply, when ATP is broken down and the energy is released, we're left with adenosine diphosphate and that inorganic phosphate group. To regenerate ATP or to make ATP, we use ADP and that phosphate and we input energy and this gives adenosine triphosphate ATP. It's really important that you can write the proper equation that goes with how ATP is broken down and how ATP is regenerated. So ATP, with the addition of water, this is known as a hydrolysis reaction, will result in the formation of ADP and a phosphate, that inorganic phosphate, and results in the release of energy. When ATP is being regenerated, we start off with the adenosine diphosphate, so the ADP, and that inorganic phosphate, and this time we add energy. This results in the formation of ATP and the release of a water molecule, and this is known as a condensation reaction. The way in which ATP is constantly regenerated and then broken down to release energy is known as the ATP cycle, and you do get diagrams like this on exam questions. Just know that when ATP is broken down, you release energy and you end up with that ADP and the phosphate, and then to regenerate ATP, you add energy in and know the role of water as well. So that's it. That's ATP. All you need to know for your exam. So if we were to make a checklist to make sure that we are covering all the bases, I would know the role of ATP, the structure of the molecule, how energy is released from ATP, some specific examples of what the energy is used for, the equations in making and breaking ATP, and the ATP cycle diagram. So you know that these videos never replace using your textbook or doing past examination questions. These videos are not made for monetary gain or intended for commercial use and should only be accessed by the Biology Bug Bears YouTube channel. And this is to ensure that all sources are always fully credited. Best of luck.